Percentages on the SAT can be tricky, but at the end of the day, they really come down to understanding these four concepts. First, you need to know how to deal with percent of, percent of. So here we see it says, this year the number of students enrolled is 140% of. What you need to remember is of means you multiply. So to get a percent of something, simply multiply by the number form of that percent. What do I mean when I say number form? So to turn a percent into a number, all we have to do is move our decimal place over to the left two spaces. So 147, that's our percent, right? And there's an invisible decimal here. If we move it over two, we get 1.47. Four, seven. So move that decimal over. That's the number that's equivalent to 147%. It says last year, 200 students enrolled. So to get 147% of 200, we multiply 200 times 1.47. Plug that into your calculator, and our answer is 294. All right, let's look at one more of these, and I definitely encourage you to pause the video and try this one on your own first. This one's a little bit more challenging, but we can see it says 40% of, so we're dealing with that same concept. This one's just going to be a little bit more difficult. So it's telling us that there are 40% of items that are red. So basically, we have our total, and we let's just call our total, I don't know, we'll call it X, right? X times what would the percentage be that's right 0.4 so we could just say 0.4x 0.4x of the items are red and then of all the red items 30 percent also have stripes so this is where things can get a little bit challenging because i was telling you you want to take your original number and multiply by the number version of the percent and we can certainly do that all the answers are in percent so we could literally just make up a number for X. And the easiest thing to do is to make our total 100. That way it's out of 100%, right? So basically 100, we'll say that's our total. And again, I'm just choosing this because it's easy to work with, times 0.4. Those items are going to be red, right? Multiply that together, it's going to be 40. Now here's the tricky part. Of the red items, 30% also have stripes. So it's not saying 30% of our 100 have stripes, it's saying of the red ones, 30% have stripes. So we take that number 40, and we're going to multiply by 30%, which would be, that's right, 0.3. Plug that into the old calculator, and we do end up with 12 as our answer. And I do recommend just throwing in a real number. I feel like it's easier to conceptualize what's happening. But in case you wanted to know what it looked like if you didn't use a number, you could actually just multiply the percentages together, right? Basically, you want to say, what's 30%? Here, I'll change my color. What's 30% of 40%? You multiply 0.3 times 0.4, and you know that you're going to end up with 0.12 or 12%, right? So that's another way to get to your answer. The next concept you need to know is the percent change formula. And let me just start off by giving you that percent change formula. So the percent change formula goes like this. You have your difference divided by your original number. The two things that you need to remember are that the difference is the difference between the original number and the new number. And after you do this operation, you need to remember that your percent is in number form. So the decimal should go two spaces to the right to get back to percent form. Let's use this problem to practice. And by the way, the indicator that you should use this formula is a percent increase or a percent decrease. If they're asking you, by what percent did it go up or by what percent did it go down? Here, they want to know what percent did it go up from 1960 to 1970. So if we look at 1960, we had 1. 1970, we had 1 1.6. Now, I said it's the difference, right? So the difference between 1 and 1 1.6 is 0. 0.6. So in our numerator, we would have 0. 0.6. And then the original was 1960, right? Because it's saying from 1960 to 1970. That means the original was 1960, which was 1. 0.6 divided by 1 is just still 0.6, right? And what 
percent is 0.6. If we move the decimal over two spaces, that is 60%. So there's the percent change formula. Let's look at one more of these. And again, I encourage you to try this by yourself first. A customer's monthly water bill was 7574. So this is going to be our original, right? And we could already start setting it up. Um, oh, and just to identify by what percent did the amount increase. So we know it's, you know, an increase of percent. So our original 7574. Due to a rate increase, her monthly bill is now 7986. So remember the top is going to be the difference. So 7986 minus 7574. And I don't know why I'm writing this out. <laughs> Definitely just throw it in your calculator real quick, right? So that's 412, which means that's our numerator. Now do this operation in your calculator real quick. And the number should be 0 0.054. And remember, we want to move our decimal over two places. So if we go boop, boop, it would be 5.4%. All right, concept number three is how to add percent. Now, adding percent is very similar to finding a percent of. Because remember, if we want a percent of something, we just multiply by that percent. The only difference is if we are adding percent, we are going to add 100% to whatever we're trying to add. Let me show you what I mean. Here it's saying the cost of a certain shirt is 20 bucks before a five sale tax is added. And if you've ever paid for anything, you know that a tax makes a number bigger, right? You have to pay more. So this is adding 5% to 20. So if we wanted to get 5% of 20, remember we would do 20 times 0 0.05, right? But we don't want 5% of something, we wanna add 5%. So what we wanna do is add 100% to this number and multiply by 105% or 1.05. What's the logic behind this? That 100 is the original 100%, the original number 20. Because if we multiply 20 by 1, we're just going to get 20 again. But then we add the additional 5%. So again, you're just going to add a 1 or 100% to whatever number you're trying to add. And if we multiply those together, 20 times 1.05 is going to equal 21. So our answer is C. Let's look at one more here. This one is supposedly a little bit more challenging. So here we have the number N is increased by 6%. So N is getting multiplied by, what's the rule? Try and figure this out on your own first. Pause the video. All right, so we're going to multiply by 1.06, our original 100% plus the 6% that we're adding. So basically, uh, we can change this to 1.06n. Uh, and it says the result is 318. So let me just write that down here. 1.06n equals 318. And it's asking us what n is. Well, now we're just doing algebra, right? We're going to divide by 1.06, plug that into the calculator, and n equals 300. So that's how you add percent. All right. And the last skill you're going to need to know is how to subtract percentages. These are also pretty easy to spot because you're going to see something like lost a percent, or in this case, it says Thomas estimates each year the value of the stove will depreciate, aka go down by 20%. So the rule here is whatever they're asking you to lower the percent by, you're going to take that away from 100% and then you're going to multiply by the result. Uh, let me show you what I mean. So Thomas installed a new stove. Time of installation, the stove had a value of 800. So our original number is 800, right? And pop quiz, what would you do if you wanted 20% of 800? That's right, you'd multiply by 0.2. Another pop quiz, what if you wanted to add 20%? That's right, you'd multiply by 1.2. So what the heck do you do if you want to subtract 20%? Well, you take 100% and we're subtracting 20% we're left with 80%, right? So that is actually the number that we wanna multiply by. 
or I should say the percentage that we want to multiply by. Since 100 minus 20 is 80, we're going to multiply by 0.8. That's how we would subtract 20% from 800. But let's look at the rest of the question here. It says, what is the estimated value of the stove exactly two years after Thomas installed it, right? So we're not just going to multiply by 0.8, because that would be one year. We want to multiply by 0.8 twice. The first 0.8 is for the first year, and then there's another year that it depreciates after that. So we're gonna multiply by 0.8 twice, throw that into the old calculator, and we get 512. All right, so that first subtraction example I showed you was already a medium difficulty. So let's do something a little different. We're jumping up to a hard difficulty level, and this problem is going to include 110% greater, so that's an increase of percent, and 55% less, which is a decrease. Go ahead and see if you could figure this one out utilizing both of those techniques. Pause the video real quick. All right, let's talk about it. So the number W is 110% greater than the number Z. So if we want to add 110%, what would that look like? Remember, we want to add 100%. So this actually becomes 210% or 2.1. So basically, W is equal to 2.1 Z because it is 110% greater than Z. It would take 2.1 Zs in order to make one W, right? Then it says the number, the number Z is 55 less, 55% 55 less than 50. So if we wanna subtract 55%, what's 100 minus 55? 45, so basically it would be 50 times 0.45. So Z is an actual number. Let's go ahead and get that number. 50 times 0.45 is 22.5. So I'll just rewrite that. Z equals 22.5. And then we can go ahead and substitute it over here as well. So instead of 2.1 times Z, we could have 2.1 times 22.5 and that's 47.25. And what were they wanting to know? What's the value of W? Oh, we accidentally just found the value of W. So our answer is 47.25. We do hope you found some value in those tips. And if you're looking to really boost your SAT score, you might wanna consider signing up for one of our small group courses. These courses are designed for those students who thrive in a more collaborative group environment. Courses are available with 12, 24, or 36 hours of expert instruction from one of our tutors. Each course includes five full-length practice exams and detailed score reports breaking everything down so you know exactly what you need to work on. Go ahead and use the link in the description to get signed up for a small group course with Revolution Prep right now.